video appropriately at the American Stock Exchange. Andrew Gauze is the author of The Secret World of Money, the book, and it's one, he is also one of the strongest voices in the country for Federal Reserve reform. Also with us is Delo Smith. He's a senior analyst and economist at the Conference Board. Thank both of you gentlemen for coming to be on our show tonight. Appreciate it. My pleasure. All right, let me get to a quote first in the book, The Secret World of Money by Andrew Gauze, and get you to comment on this quote. What it says here, and Rich, you listen to this too, because you're a skeptic in all this. It says, the Federal Reserve estimates there are $597 billion outstanding in Federal Reserve notes. If we replace these with United States notes at a cost of three cents each, the annual interest savings would exceed $45 billion. Mr. Gauze, what does that mean? Well, simply put, uh, these interest-bearing notes uh, are representing the bonds. So if we replace Federal Reserve notes with United States notes, then we can use the Federal Reserve notes that we get in their stead and buy back $600 billion worth of bonds. The annual interest savings would be about $45 billion at current rates. Okay, when you say Federal Reserve note, you're talking, I've got my wallet here and I'm pulling out a dollar bill. You're talking about these. This That's is right. a Federal Reserve note, right? It's written across the top. That's correct. And everything we carry is printed by this Federal Reserve organization, which is not a public organization. These are private banks that print yeah. this? Each of the Federal Reserve banks are privately owned. The money is actually printed by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, which is under the Treasury Department. So technically, we still print the money. And you know, I have no problem with that. Right. Uh, but my there, problem the private is, banks are authorizing the printing of this money. That's right. And they earn interest when it, the Mint prints it. Well, Thomas Jefferson put it best. He said, if a nation can issue a dollar bond, it can issue a dollar bill. The thing that makes the bond good also makes the bill good. Except that the bond benefits only those who issue it, where the bill benefits those who are directly involved with the labor. Okay, so to see if I understand what you're saying, whenever we have debt and the, and the government prints more money, what's happened is these private banks have authorized this printing of money. They put their name on it, Federal Reserve Note, meaning private banks. Correct. And, and what happens is we as a people pay them interest on this money, which they haven't loaned us. That's right. Yeah, the only way that money gets into circulation today is through the monetization of debt. Now, we all know that our government is a big issuer of debt, but private issuers also issue debt. We're going to do our best to explain the process. It's actually not as complicated as you might think. You probably find it simpler than rich. We'll find it. But let's <laughs> take a look at some of the graphics to make things a little bit easier. We start here with Congress, who overspends. Each year, we spend more money on things like salaries to military personnel, Social Security payments, building federal highways, everything you can imagine. Uh, we overspend money, and Congress got to make it up somehow. So, as we move to slide two, what they do is they authorize the Treasury Department to print IOUs. They say, you can do this, print so many. There's our arrow there, and they give that authorization, and they print the IOUs. Moving to slide three, what happens is then the Treasury Department sends these IRUs to the Federal Reserve Banks. Now, they are private institutions, not government anymore. You see there, they're on the right. That's uh, separating them from Congress and the Treasury Department. And those IOUs go to, go to the Federal Reserve Banks. Then we go to slide number four, and what happens is the Federal Reserve Banks then authorize the U.S. Mint to print what we hold in our wallets. Those are the Federal Reserve notes. Now, if you look at, stay on that slide for just a second. If you look at that, you can see the IOUs. These are Treasury bills, Treasury notes. There are various forms of IOU debt that have been given to the Federal Reserve Banks. They stay now on that right side. These Federal Reserve Banks now hold these notes and get interest on these notes when in fact they have provided nothing in the way of principle. They're just holding these notes and now they, these private banks, have money that is yours and mine. Mr. Smith. Well, I, of course, obviously don't agree with Andrew <laughs> at all. That money is not owned by the Federal Reserve. It's owned by the United States government. It is treasury property. It is true that the Federal Reserve Board oversees it for the treasury, but the treasury is in total control. Secretary Rubin is in control of that money, and it is part of the United States. The Federal Reserve acts as an agent of the United States That's treasury. That's a complete fallacy. The, the money of the United States are United States notes under Title 31, Section 5115. That is the money of the United States. Federal Reserve notes say on the top, Federal Reserve note, because they're a note of the Federal Reserve. If they want, then let's erase that and replace it with United States note, the way John Kennedy wanted to do, and then we would be on a sound money system. It would still be debt-based, but at least there would be no interest. Remember the words of Jefferson. What makes the bond good also makes the bill good. It's ludicrous to say you need a middleman in there to make sure everything's going all right. And your point, Mr. Gauze, is that the government, the U.S. government issues this bond, 
by which the, tre the, the Federal Reserve, rather, then oh. authorizes the Federal Reserve notes, the money That's we right. carry. That's so right. If it's, if, it's, if the credibility of the bond is what, is what it's based on, why doesn't the government just print money on its own, as opposed to having this private banking organization doing the authorizing for it? Absolutely. The most prominent United States note, and I have a sample of it, is a $2 note with Jefferson on the portrait. It is a red note. You've seen it, folks. And if you think about it, and I ask you, if you got your note tomorrow and it didn't say Federal Reserve note on it, it said United States note, would it be any less valuable to you? Would you not accept it as a note for a dollar if it were a note from the United States? My question is, go ahead. Okay, go, I, the best way to put it is, if you had a checkbook, which is what our treasury is, it is a checkbook, and you had the power to write checks that no one would ever cash, which is what our money is because it has no backing in gold. So you're allowed to create checks that no one would ever cash. Would you write them yourself? Or would you give your checkbook to a friend, let him write the checks, and then borrow the checks back? I have before me, before we get into the body of the program, uh, three instruments, three yep. notes. Hmm. If you would be so kind as to tell the audience what they are now looking at. That's a silver certificate. Now that silver certificate limited the government in the amount of dollars that it could create by requiring that it had one silver dollar on deposit in the treasury for every one of those that it issued. Now at the very top of this dollar, if they can see it, what does it say at the very top? Silver certificate. It says silver certificate. certificate. That's right. If they take out of their pockets right now the dollar that has, is now in circulation, what does it say at the very top of the bill? A Federal Reserve note. Now, what we have in circulation now is a Federal Reserve note. That's right. Instead of a certificate for a dollar, you have an IOU for a dollar. The interesting thing about it is it doesn't specify a promise to pay any specific thing at any specific time. So it's not even really an incomplete note. It's a note under color of law. It is a promissory note? That's correct. It is an instrument of debt? It is absolutely an instrument of debt. And when this bill is printed that we think is a dollar, mm. it creates debt? That's exactly right. That's now, this dollar that is no longer in circulation, that says it is a, a silver certificate, Correct. when it is minted, when it is circulated or printed, it creates wealth. That's right. It represents wealth that's already been created in the form of the silver dollar or a gold dollar in the case of a gold certificate. All right. Now, I have one other note here, and this note uh, says at the very top, this is a $5 bill, but at the top it says United States note. That's right. Yeah, you've heard it said we owe the money to ourselves. Well, that is true, but the reality is that the only way that a, a regular dollar that we know as a dollar gets into circulation is when the Federal Reserve creates it and then loans it to someone. This says, you, what note does this say now? United States note. The critical difference here is now that... Now, this dollar says what kind of note? Federal, Federal Reserve. Reserve note. Now What's the difference in the dollar, that, the, the bill that's called a dollar, that's circulated now, that says Federal Reserve note, right? and the uh, bill that used to be circulated saying United States note? The United States note benefits no one except the people of the United States. The Federal Reserve note benefits the Federal Reserve. 